Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Good afternoon, welcome to the homestead. You see these old girls behind me? Well, we need to add to our flock, which means we need new chicks, which means I need a brooder. Now the brooder that I had before that you've seen in the past, I borrowed from Pete B's homestead. But now it's time to build my own, but I have one big issue. And that is I am very, very limited on space in our small barn here. So what we are gonna show you how to do today is build a collapsible brooder. That brooder can easily be taken apart by just undoing a few screws. And then it can be stored really easily flat in a corner somewhere and not take up much space at all. Let's get going. So for this project, you are going to need some plywood. It's expensive right now, so if you have scrap laying around like we do, utilize that. You're gonna need some hardware cloth. It doesn't matter what size it is. This happens to be quarter inch, but you can use half inch, that's no problem. And then we have some one by threes. Now the actual dimension of these is three quarter by two and a half, which works out perfect for this project. As you can see here, we've also got scrap from the doghouse project. Now you can also use pallet slats for a portion of the project. They are gonna vary in size though, but if you need to utilize the scrap, do so. You are also going to need a shop light. Now this, in my opinion, is the best kind of shop light. It's where the hood here comes all the way down past the bulbs. That's gonna help us prop it onto the top of the brooder. Now you will also need some fasteners. I have one and a quarter inch wood screws. And that's because on the bottom, I am utilizing three quarter inch plywood, which I had laying around. If you're utilizing half inch plywood, I'd recommend getting one inch wood screws. So you will also need some hinges. We had some door hinges hanging around here on the homestead. So that's what I'm gonna utilize. I just had one of these other tiny little hinges here. I can't find any more. This, in my opinion, is better. So if you're going to pick up something for the project, get something this small. If you have big shop tools like a table saw, I would utilize those, but you can use your hand tools also. So for this project, we're gonna be 48 inches long, two feet wide, and two feet tall. And with the design shape of this, when we are done, the floor space will be about five and a half square feet. Now that's important to understand because your chicks need a certain amount of space to grow. Now chicks between zero and four weeks old need about six square inches of space to be able to grow properly. Once they get bigger, between four and eight weeks, they're gonna need up to about one square foot of floor space for each bird. Luckily, you don't keep chicks in a brooder that long. They are fully feathered by five or six weeks and then you move them to your coop. This size brooder is perfect for about 15 chicks. This three quarter inch piece of plywood is going to be our floor. It's going to be 48 inches by 24 inches. When you're done, you're gonna have three pieces that are 24 by 48, and then two that are 24 by 24. So the nice thing about this project is that you can do it with just one sheet of plywood. Keep in mind that this is a small brooder for just a few chicks. As I mentioned at the beginning, today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of classes to help you acquire and learn new creative skills. And if you didn't already know, I am always looking for ways to improve these videos for you. And that includes building my knowledge in video creation, editing, and other areas. Right now, I'm taking a class on cinematography offered by Finn Badgley. My goal is to improve how our videos look so that I can better visually communicate our story or project. I'm excited to continue learning and discovering new skills that I utilize to grow our channel and present better information for you. To help make 2022 a year of new learning and growth, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who use the link below a one month free trial on their learning platform. After that, they offer an annual membership for less than 10 bucks a month. Head below and click the link in the video description to start exploring today. Now that we have our sides and bottom cut out, we are gonna stack all of the sides together, aligning the corners of all four of them. Once you've clamped everything into place, we're gonna take a piece of our guide material and we're gonna align it also with the edge. That guide material is going to get screwed onto the bottom, but we need to mark this so that we know 
where to start our cut. For us, it's going to be two and a half inches in, but it's going to be dependent on the material that you use. Once we have the first mark for our guide or brace material here, we're gonna measure over 9 16 of an inch and make a mark. Half inch plywood is normally 9 16 of an inch, but don't make it too wide because then it will rock back and forth and won't fit nicely. So our slots are going to be 12 inches deep if you're doing 24 inch tall sides. Set your blade depth on your saw as deep as it'll go so you can cut through all the layers. If you can't on the first pass, that's okay. We just want a nice uniform cut through every single piece. So you'll also need a chisel to cut out the end piece inside the slot right here. Now that we have our four slots cut in this side, what we're gonna do is take the two short end pieces and slide them down so that the ends align on the other side. Once you get the ends aligned on this side, then you are going to use your guide material again or your bracing material that we are gonna show you how to put on the bottom. Make our first mark, measure over 9 16 and cut the slot on the same side as all the other ones. Now that we have all of our sides cut, it's time to work on the bottom. We're gonna take that same guide material, whatever it is that you have, we're gonna align it with the edges of the bottom and we are gonna mark it. And you are gonna do that on all four edges. Now these end pieces that you do cut need to be the same exact width as this inside tab of each of the sides. And on the long ends, don't worry about using an entire long piece. It's not necessary. You can use shorter pieces on that side as well to save material. You're gonna to wanna to drill some pilot holes so this doesn't split. And then secure with those one and a quarter screws. Do that around the entire project and then we can set these into place. So here we go, here is our base complete. We're gonna take our long sides just set them in here like this and then our short sides and slide them into the slots just like that now it's time to work on our top when I have very thin material like this and need to make a hinged door with some sort of screen in it, I like to use this method, the sandwich style method of making a door. And let me show you what I mean. So obviously we're gonna create our frame the same size as the top of our brooder. So when joining one by material like this, you can't really miter the corners and put them together. It doesn't work too well with this thin light material. And when we're attaching our screen, it really doesn't work too well to make a nice frame and then staple this on the top. That's really not that secure. If something wants to get in there, it's gonna rip out those staples pretty easily. So as you can see the way the frame sits here, we are going to put our hardware cloth down over the top of it. Nothing is secured yet, but we are gonna come over the top and we are going to secure everything with a long piece here. What that's going to do is give me the ability to secure the end piece and also sandwich in between our hardware cloth. So just make sure to make it secure that you're overlapping your joints all the way around and putting enough fasteners in to make a nice rigid side and end. And we are going to do that all the way around. So here's the finished frame. You can see I have a few gaps in here, but that's okay. This one will give us a spot to put a nice latch. Let's get our top door onto our brooder. Now what we are going to do is secure our top hinges to the back side here. And that is just with six screws. And these six screws for these hinges are the only screws that you need to take out when you take the whole thing apart to store it before the next season. So along with air, chicks need light. So make sure you put some sort of light in there for them. This 48 inch long fluorescent fixture works perfect. We're actually going to attach our light fixture 
to our top door frame. What we're going to do is simply drill a hole through the shroud and anchor it with a few screws. Now this year we decided to try out one of these heating plates for our brooder. This one is by rent -a coop and it's pretty neat. It's got adjustable legs on it. You just kind of squeeze this little thing here and you can move the legs up and down and that'll give you the ability to adjust it as your chicks mature. So obviously closer to the ground and your chicks will be warmer when they're tiny. Move it up as they get older. Then it also has this nice top that sits on it so that you do not get any chicks sitting on the top and pooping all over it. They can't sit up on the cone. And that fits nicely down in our brooder. Now the brooder is really easy to take apart. Once you take those six screws out from the top, all you do is store the top. You can leave the light fixture right on it if you like. Take each end off. Take the size out of the bottom. Pick up your bottom and store it. Well, there we go. Here is our brooder. Just stacked up against the table. You can see it doesn't take up much space at all. This can easily be laid flat anywhere or just stacked up against the back wall of your barn. We hope you enjoyed the brooder build today. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the comment section below. We will also leave a list of tools and materials, including the chick heater, in the description below the video. Now, I want you to go click on this video right here, which talks about when to take your chicks from the brooder to your coop. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.